Peace, everybody. Welcome to Randomly Selected, powered by the Silver Room. Here you are. Look at you, all dressed up and stuff. And if you stumbled upon this podcast, thank you. Really appreciate you being here. There's a lot, and we hope that you hang out with us for the long run. Today's show, Lil Royce Hawkins from Chicago PD joins us as we talk about a lot of things. Stay tuned, y'all. It's Randomly Selected, powered by the Silver Room. You rep Harvey hard. Being a Harvey rep, a resident mm-hmm. and a representative, how, how important is that for you? It's extremely important because that's what home is. Yeah. You know, um, my my grandfather was one of the first to instill within me that, you know, home is where the heart is and you start from the heart every time. You know what I'm saying? And always, and so that means not only take care of your heart, but take care of home. Mm-hmm. Um Um, I was blessed to be able to have a real dope, inspiring conversation with, um, with, with a powerful Harvey, Harvey native, Tom Dreesen. Okay. Tom Dreesen, the comedian that opened up for Frank Sinatra in the Rat Pack for years, um, still teaches comedy symposiums out there in Vegas. Years ago, he talked to me about how Sinatra would always tell him to represent Harvey Mm. because that's where you're from. And if you don't, who will? And how else is Harvey gonna get on the map? Mm. And so, um, so, so those couple examples um, is, is really just what I just wanted to be obedient to, you know. Um, but also, Harvey needs the love. Harvey needs the light, right. especially now, right. you know. Um, for me, growing up in Harvey was 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 a unique experience, um, you know. That I didn't I didn't learn how. Um, I guess how difficult it would be to to grow up in Harvey until honestly I'd grown out of Harvey, mm. if that makes sense. I get what you're saying. Yeah, you know, it was like you know, as as I was going to school, um, you know, I, I didn't know that uh, that that the school systems um, that that there was a discrepancy between like the school 20 minutes away at Stag mm-hmm. and and how they have resources and opportunities that we don't. Um, you know, I, I didn't really, growing up in it, you don't really understand the socioeconomic issues that you're being afflicted with. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't see the darkness coming, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and, and it wasn't until more recently where I was like, oh, man, I was in a, we were in a tight spot. Yeah. You know what I mean? I remember being, um, being a student at Thornton and being a part of that that special clique that did their best to make sure that the referendum passed mm-hmm. when um when when the when the school districts were being threatened with losing um that. funding yeah. um and so at that point like the cross country teams would be combined and there's no chess club no more right. and you know what I'm saying all of that and so you know at the, at the time because my grandfather was 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 that example of uh servitude and and community service um you know, I I got involved because he wanted me to. You know what I mean? And 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 all of those activities planted seeds that are that are still growing in me now to make sure that I always give back, to make sure that I'm always being intentional mm-hmm. about um about hood development. I know with you, um, and the success of the show, Chicago P D. By the way, for people who have no idea that Chicago PD exists. It's a great TV show. Appreciate that. Um, and you and I had a conversation about the show, but more about you and how seeing a black man on television. Mm-hmm. And then for people who, let's just go back to the Harvey thing for a second. Kids in Harvey, brothers in Harvey, brothers and sisters that live in Harvey, young people, get a chance to see you, know you, know your story, what that means to see somebody like that, that they can like, that dude lived in this town. That is an invaluable power to have. You know what I mean? That's 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 gold. And you don't waste any of that power. You you do a lot of charitable things. You do a lot of giving back, a lot of reaching back into your neighborhood. Mm-hmm. That's important to you. And, and and hearing this about your grandfather, that's where it all began. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. For me, the um, you know, I I've really been trying to do my best to condition uh, myself to lean into significance even more than success. Mm-hmm. Because if you focus on significance, success kind of just comes with it, mm-hmm. you know? Um, I think any any hardworking asshole can be successful. 
You know what I mean? But that I mean know that you, Yeah, that mean you want to be around them. <laughs> I think we both know. <laughs> yeah, we both. Yeah, we we know strong examples <laughs> of hardworking assholes <laughs> that um you know that that put every ounce of passion into what they do and what they love. But that doesn't mean that we like being around them. Yeah, that don't mean that yeah. they changed. Yeah. Um, the atmosphere for you know in in a positive direction at all, um, and so for me, I focus on that part first. Mm-hmm. You know how can how can I make sure that when I walk into a room, people are affected in a powerful way, mm-hmm. um, um, and not just when I walk into a room, but naturally when, whenever I leave this earth. You know how can I guarantee that the things that people have to say about Leroy Hawkins, um, you know, just create create power and positivity no matter what, and then with that. As I find myself focusing on that, I find myself in successful situations. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about, of course, I got to talk about Chicago PD. But you were in, uh, you were on an episode, or maybe more more than one, of Southside. Yeah. (laughs) And that episode is when the brothers come up, and I guess they're trying to get their property back. Yeah, they they want that Xbox. They wanted the Xbox back. And you can (laughs) <laughs> Can you repeat your line? Like I say, when they first walk up, I say something to the effect of, um, <laughs> "I'm sorry, my brothers. I, I don't mean to inconvenience you. I truly don't, but I ain't got no damn Xbox, <laughs> bitch, nigga." <laughs> that is the best. The reason why I like that line so much because your delivery is really like there's a sense of profundity. You're like, "Hello, gentlemen. I don't really mean to inconvenience you." But I don't got you got this. <laughs> yeah. And that blew my mind. Cause I'm like, oh yeah, it's LaRoyce. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? I'm seeing you as Kevin Atwater, you on TV, stealing on people, in a whip, drunk, you know, in a police station, being very serious and tense. But this yeah. was like, I didn't know that there was a comedic bend to what you do. How long have you and are you really on the the path of doing more comedy and more funny stuff? Yeah, so so I, I appreciate my role on Southside. Um, I reoccur on that show, right? Like we're we're I'm even. I mean, I got to work on Southside five thirty in the morning. Oh wow! So um, so you're so, not off at all. You mm-hmm. get what a, you had a week off. Well, yeah. Well, I'm I'm off from Chicago PD right now. Yeah. And um and I just got you know random dates throughout the summer where I got to uh, clock in with Southside nice. as we shoot season two on HBO Max. Nice. Um, nice. Very and, nice. Uh, and and yeah, what I love about that role, um, because. It was. I, I saw a few people audition for it, including my little brother. Mm. Um, when when Southside was was uh, was auditioning early on, and what I what the opportunity that I saw was for there to be this threat of violence on the block or this or this hard, you know, quote unquote gangster yeah. that could also have a discipline, right? That could also have something that holds him back. So. I walked into the audition and I made him vegan. I said, "Imagine if he was a vegan vice lord." <laughs> you feel me? Yeah, and, and, that, and that gave him, yeah, and, and that gave him something to, um, you know, just, just something to hold on to. You know what I'm saying? Um, something different to think about, right? Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, he's actually this savant that can go there with you, but naturally doesn't want to and won't if he doesn't have to. He's right. somebody that you can find cleaning up his block and making sure there's no trash on the streets. You know what I'm saying? That that conversation that mm-hmm. was actually, or this thing that you're talking about, I improved a conversation that was interrupted where I'm like talking to the rest of my V-goons about monosaturated fats and how if you just eat some avocados, you can kind of knock the fat off your obliques. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like wow. like you know and 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 so as I as I think about and I model that character after um cats from 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 the hood that I know and that I love that I know have that side to them as well, but right. we don't see that part. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And so I'm grateful for Bashir and Diallo, Sultan, the cats that created uh Southside Absolutely. because they give you the opportunity to to throw those nuances onto these characters that the world would never see, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, that character is a is a hodgepodge, a big bro, mm-hmm. um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, Debo, mm-hmm. um, but but you know like classic iconic hood guys that um, uh, uh, man, his name is losing me from um, from uh, from from that Spike Lee joint, do the right thing. Oh, uh, Radio Raheem. Radio Raheem. Yeah, you, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's it's like it's, he's a combination of all those people. Yeah, mm-hmm. you 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 do it well. It, it is it is something to see because you uh, that show. First of all, shout out to them brothers for the 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 mere thought of making 
a TV show about the South Side of Chicago that's scarily accurate in many, right? in many, many ways. <laughs> that show is mad accurate. But that's because they, they, the, the art of casting, mm. to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It's like they, they know exactly how to cast. It's not even necessarily the who's, but the how's, right? Yeah. It's like they certain certain roles go to people that are very, very authentic to Southside Chicago, like specifically. Yeah, it works. Them them dudes, man, they are very good at their job. Got to get them up here one day, Stefan. Yeah, bro. Season two is gonna be crazy. Too, I'm dog. looking forward to that. You gonna make me get HBO Max? Is that you gonna have to get HBO Max, bro? <laughs> is that gonna be the new Leroy Hawkins Network? HBO Max? That's man, what I ain't gonna hold you, man. It might, man. It depends on how they talking Why to. Why not? And listen to them. Maybe they will say something appropriate. Yeah. Make it that way. Um, so uh, you were also in a football movie. The name is escaping me right now. The Express. The Express. Thank you. Yeah, that was my first joint. So how did that happen? How did all of the acting stuff, that being the first, culminate to you being Kevin Atwater on well, Chicago PD? It, it, to be honest with you, man, it all starts with comedy. I started a stand-up comedy um, when I was 17 years old. Were you performing in Chicago? I was. I was. But I was, I was performing on a church circuit. Oh. I was what you would consider like one of the original gospel kings of comedy in Chicago. Like it's DVDs in gospel bookstores that have my young face as like a gospel king of comedy. Word. Literally. I'm not playing I'm with you. It was like it was, it was it was this it was I'm this, looking. Uh, I'm going on matter of fact, let me go on eBay while you talk. It was this entertainment ministry called um You Got Jokes. Uh, this okay. cat named Jojo the Entertainer. Yes, I remember Jojo the Entertainer. Yeah, he was a barber also. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. Yeah, that, that was like wow. booking comedians and, and, and getting getting comedians gigs were like his side hustle. And that, that's it. I started with him. He was a barber. I did not know that he was a barber. Yeah, he was a barber. Wow. And so it started with him. So naturally, so I said that to say this. When I went to college, I couldn't really think of nothing else to study other than acting. Mm. Um, outside of history, I was going to double major in acting and in history because I'm a big history head myself. Illinois and I was State like, you know, Redbird, by the Illinois way. State. Yes, sir. And so I was like, you know, if I can, if I could teach history, if if none of this stuff really, you know, pans out, um, I could live with that. Yeah. And so, uh, but I got my first opportunity to audition for a film when PR casting here in Chicago formerly known as TPR cast, and they were looking for a black actor that can play a black athlete. I'm in my first semester at Illinois State, not even a part of any productions yet. All that honestly done up to that point was just popped into my professor's offices with as much good energy as I could. And I was like, yo, if y'all need anything, I'm here. Yeah. I'm always available. You know what I'm saying? I, I just had young, funny energy, raw energy, right? Yeah. Um, and one day they were like, yo, we got this opportunity for you if you want to take it. There's an audition for a movie that I didn't know was a major motion film until I went to the audition. I never forget my pops came and picked me up from from Illinois State to drop me off at this at this audition. And when I walked in there, I'm looking at all these movies: The, the Breakup, yeah, um, uh, Mr. Three Thousand, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just like powerful films, and I'm like, oh, this is this is for real, for real. <laughs> so I remember I, I had to you know take a chill. Um, I went to the bathroom, said a prayer and did some push ups. Word. And honestly the rest is history. Wow. You know, that and, movie's and, interesting too. It's yeah, man. It was movie. it was uh it was it was the first thing that like I said, it got my foot in the door. Mm -hmm. It got my foot in the door. I ended up playing Art Baker, um, one of the three black athletes on the team. Right. Um, and so for for my first film to be a biopic and to, for it to be about a a, a powerful black um athlete. Um, that the world would miss because of leukemia. You know what I'm saying? It, it was dope how it kind of came full circle because it had history in it, yeah. um, which was my thing anyway. And so I was like, okay, this is this is dope. But naturally, um, so but I had to withdraw from school in order to do the film. So I um, my second semester at Illinois State, I actually had to leave mm. to go shoot this film for the summer. And it, it took me three months to shoot that. Um, I... I Forfeited my scholarship. I had a full full tuition waiver for Illinois State. You shot ball, right? Um, I, I played basketball for a couple of years at Thornton. Okay, but but I went to college just basically because you know by then I was a speech champion. Right, right, right. I right. won state in speech a few times. I got pretty good at essays, and I and my grades were you know I had good grades, and so it was like um, I ended up getting a scholarship that was a full ride for any state school that I got accepted to. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, yeah, and then. Uh, 
And I, it was be, between DePaul and Illinois State. And Illinois State just felt, if one, it was further from the crib, but also it, it had a real college feel to it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, it does, no doubt. DePaul at the time had this conservatory for the actors. If you were interested in acting, where they kind of like cut people every other month. Yeah. And I was like, I don't even know if I'm good at acting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I just know I'm, I'm a little funny. Uh, so Illinois State was just a safer spot, but also it felt like a college. Um, but thank God I went because, you know, everything ended up working out. So there's the origin story of Leroy's. We are clear. This is a really cool brother that had a really wonderful uh, uh, setting around him of people who could protect him and make sure that he did the right thing. Now that we know all that, let's talk about him playing a black police officer from the city of Chicago on Chicago PD, one of NBC's top rated programs. What is it like to play a policeman in this environment on television? Get any flack for that, bro? To be honest with you, I don't know. If I do, I don't see those side eyes That's that much. That's kind of like if somebody says the N word, you don't know if they're saying it or not because you never hear it. I know what right. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, I, I can I can only assume that that those that that energy is out there. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm not naive, um, but that's not what I receive most of the time. Okay. Um, and 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 I'm grateful for that because you know I didn't I didn't choose I chose this show. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I wish I could say the show chose me, but it was honestly, it was it was me being obedient to something in me that was like, go that way. Mm. Because what a lot of people don't know was is my, my original offer, the first offer um, for, for a regular on any series that I received was from HBO Ballers. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Ballers um, offered me my, my, my first regular opportunity. Um, I, I would have been uh, Ricky, who... John wow. David Washington plays. Yeah. Um, wow. And, and, that's, and that's a good brother. He's doing a great job. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> but but before, b- before him, um, you know, Steve Levinson, who created Ballers, you know, called my phone. Um, and I, I remember being in, in the hood when he called me. And this was probably like two or three days before my phone was off. You know what I'm saying? So thank God I was in the pocket. And uh, and (laughs) for him to call me, (laughs) for him to call me and for him to ask my permission to speak to a Dick Wolf on my behalf and ask if I could do both shows. Mm. Like when I woke up that morning, I didn't know I was going to go to sleep that night with two networks fighting over me a little bit. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was. It was like I knew my life was going to change from that night, from that point on. I just didn't actually know which direction. Mm. And so as the, as I let it vibrate and as, you know, they go through the deals with my agents and as they have these conversations, you know, it's like, it, it, this is how I felt. Um, if I could be frank, I'm like, dang, man. So my black ass is waiting on the white man to figure out what they want to do with me. And to be honest with you, <laughs> to be honest with you, I'm gonna go whichever direction the white man tell me. You because funny. you know what I'm saying? And I, that's the pocket <laughs> I was in. I was yeah. like, my phone finna be off in a minute. I was like, I don't even know how to, how I'm gonna know what they tell me. If the phone isn't on. If the uh, phone right. isn't on. After a while I had to handle my business through my little brother's phone. Um <laughs> But but yeah, I, I had that choice and he knew I wanted to work at home. And something in my spirit was just like, listen, if Chicago PD doubles back and offers you the job also go that way. Now naturally if they wouldn't offer me anything, I would have had to be on ballers. Yeah. But thank God ballers offered me something because I think that's what made NBC and Chicago PD and PD and them think about me differently. Mm. And yeah, man, before I knew it, I was like, you know, I really want to work at home. Um I want to be able I want to be connected to my family. You know what I'm saying? I think this role of a cop honestly is gonna hold more significance because I mean, I have the opportunity now to kind of bridge gaps, mm. you know, between how I know that we felt about police in the hood and how I know police feel about us. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I got the opportunity to be the bridge. Do you find that in conversations with young people, because I know that you do a lot of talking to young cats, mm. is that a thing? That, is that front of mind and talking to them like, yo, look, the reason why this is happening in our communities is this, and then these cats out here that's trying to fight crime, air quotes, aren't really doing it because of this. How, how, does, how do you take 
this powerful character on this this weekly show and and use that energy toward people in the hood or toward cats that are kind of like on the other side of right yeah um to be honest with you what i've learned is that the most important pl- place to put the interest is honestly on the other side not necessarily because we know us right. i think we know who we are right when it comes to the streets right. and we know why Right. We don't trust the cop. We know why growing up in most hoods, you 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 honestly trust the dope man probably first. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's because there's a there's a kindred connection mm-hmm. that that makes you feel safer and, and and that you trust. And naturally, historically, because of who the cops have been to our community, um, there's just this inherent distrust that you have, right? Like I, I never forget. I'm gonna tell a, uh, a short story, if you don't mind. I never yeah. forget. I was uh, I was in Harvey. I was in high school. I remember I was a junior high school, and it's not important why I was riding my little sister's bike in my drawers. <laughs> okay. It's not important why that happened. I won't ask. Uh-huh. I, you know, at some point though, and when at the mics point, aren't on, I'm gonna ask. Yeah, you. yeah, yeah. And it had, you know, it had a lot why. to do with my little sister. had just had a birthday party, and we, me and my little brother, were like, we wanted to sing. Um, temptation songs like the chipmunk. So we are like, we took all the helium. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And that helium, it, it messes with your cells a little bit. I, mean, I ain't gonna hold you. Yeah. So by the time my mama told me to take out the garbage and I'm coming back into the crib, my little sister's bike literally started telling me to ride it. Like, <laughs> ride it. Like, that's how I felt. I was like, I can't ride you, man. You, my little sister's bike. And he's like, man, it'll be great. You know what I'm saying? Just, just get old. Like, I remember having that conversation with the bike. Oh, man. So I get on the bike. And um, do a few laps. Um, I end up, I'm, I'm, now I'm out too late. I'm at my best friend Bobblehead's house. Him and I were partners in speech. Okay. Still partners to this day, man. He's like one of my best homies. Yeah. Um, I left the bike at his house because I can honestly run home faster than I can ride the bike. So I'm like, I'm going <laughs> to leave it here, bro. I pick it up in the morning when we walk to school. But I'm about to hurry up and run home. I've been outside for too long. Right. Soon as I... Bust the corner, paddy wagon come pulling up. Oh man! Lights flashing, cops hop out. <laughs> Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Guns on me. I'm in my drawers. Okay. And low top Chuck Taylors. <laughs> and the cops are on you. And the cops are on me, telling me that. And and I have no reason to believe they're not gonna shoot me. Right. Yeah, I'm like I'm about to, like you know what I'm saying in my mind. I, I'm just I'm running. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. like, I don't know who they think I am. Yeah, yeah. But they don't have no reason not to shoot me. Yeah. So I'm just begging them. I got my hands up. I'm just begging them. I'm like, please don't shoot. And they're like, where the hell are you going? I'm going. I'm running back to my to, to my mama house. Hey, where you coming from? I'm coming from Bobblehead house. <laughs> Who's Bobblehead? <laughs> Bobblehead. <laughs> so that's my friend, Cat Rod. He was like, a girl house? You come from a girl? I was like, no. You come from a boy house? I'm like, yes, boy. And you're like, I'm having this. Visceral conversation with the cop. They still got the gun pointed at my head. Whoa! And so I'm <laughs> naturally, I'm, I'm, I'm just nervous. They they cuff me up, throw me in the paddy wagon, and drive two blocks. Right. And now I'm just in there. I'm in I'm in the back of the paddy wagon. And mind you know I, you know I told you I got a church upbringing. Right. Born and raised in the church. So right. first person I thought about was the Apostle Paul, formerly known as Saul. Yes, sir. You know, when he got locked up, yes, sir. he just sang gospel songs, barely. So I'm just in the back. <laughs> Wailing. Here it comes. Singing. Wailing. Do you know what I'm saying? Doing my best. You don't know my story, all the things that I've been through. Ooh. Like, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm, in that, I'm pulling out some of the classics. Oh, now, man. cops are pulling up. <laughs> so, so, But the car stopped. The cars have stopped for probably like 20 minutes by now. Cops pull up with their flashlights. They looking in there. They listening to me singing. They laughing. They like, you know what I'm saying? They making fun of me a little bit. Right. Walking in and out, just talking stuff. And then all of a sudden, one of my little brother's homies is outside of the uh, paddy wagon. They open the door and they ask him to identify me. Little homie was like, oh, no, that's LaRoyce. That's Lamar's big brother. It wasn't him. Oh, wow. So apparently, naturally, I was running away from a crime scene. His house had just been robbed. Oh, wow. 
You know what I'm saying? And so based oh, off of how, where I'm running and how I'm running, I get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? But he was, but when he, but by now, whoever they was looking for was gone. Right, right. Because now they got this dude. You, you know what I'm saying? Because they did, head crib. Right, they hemming me up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and at this point, bro, it's probably like, I don't know exactly what time it is, but it, I think it was, like, I've been in there for like a few hours. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They finally identified me as, as, as not who they was looking for, and they was like, okay. Um, so I tell them where I live. I'm like, can y'all drive me back off? They say, yeah, we got you. So they pull up in front of my mama's crib, and all I ask is that they walk me to the door so that my mama can know where I've been because I was just supposed to be taking out the garbage. Right. You I know what I'm saying? Ago. Hours ago. <laughs> the, cop, the cop, he looked at me. He was like, oh, don't trip. We got you. I'm about to get some paperwork out the front. Oh, no, they didn't. When I tell you, they peeled off and did a U-turn. <laughs> That so sounds, now I'm just out here. That sound like the Harvey police, too. Sound like the that Harvey sound police, like don't the Harvey, Yes, sir. So did. naturally, you understand, after that experience, <laughs> uh, after that experience, uh, why I don't trust the police right. from my own neighborhood. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and that was a black cop. Oh, That's man. just police. Right. You know? Right. And so um, I, I didn't know that one day I mm -hmm. would find my own personal empathy. Hmm. As I got to know cops on the job, that helped me wrap my mind around his character. Right. Um, one of them, namely, you know, is Brian Luch. You know, what I'm saying, former police officer who's a consulting producer now, mm -hmm. who whose stories help, you know, write what we come up with on on Wednesday nights. Um, I had to develop my own empathy for that role. Mm -hmm. You know, for that person. Um, the same way that person has to develop their own empathy for us, mm. you know? Mm. And what I learned is that without that empathy, at the very least, at a very, at, we, we, there's, there's no humanity in how we handle ourselves. You know what I'm saying? And right. so what I do my best to do is that that's what makes Atwater so important. Is because out of everybody in that unit that we focus on in intelligence, he's the one who is the most responsible for adding that human element, mm -hmm. having that empathy for the people who 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 usually aren't served and protected in the way that they should. Is he the conscience of that unit? Most of the time, I think he is. Yeah. I think I think he teaches. You know, and what's interesting though is that I noticed that. You know, because Atwater and LaRoyce at this point, they're pretty much the same dude. Mm. And so, um, you know, I find LaRoyce is doing the same thing for my white castmates mm -hmm. as I do for, as Atwater does for his white coworkers. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like I find myself sometimes being that voice of reason or that example of black light. Mm that otherwise they wouldn't know how to identify. Right, right. And that's all it is. Right. It's, it's really black light that matters hmm. the most, in my humble opinion. Yeah. And so when I tell you that I, tr I throw my interest onto the white audience, and I had this conversation with, with, with our showrunner, Rick E. Mm -hmm. I said, my responsibility is not just to be a powerful example of black excellence to black people, but to the white people. Because through me, we have an opportunity to stop normalizing, to stop being numb to things. You know what I'm saying? Like Atwater has to be probably the most affected by black death yeah. or by the black tragedies that we have to story tell about. Because if it's normal to me, it's going to be normal to them. Right. You know? Right. So, um, so, so yeah, so that's the weight. Um, like I said, that, that black light, that's the burden. Um, and and I talk about the uh, I talk about the upbringing often, but I know I know it's in the, I know it's in the book of Matthew. The chapter is escaping me, mm -hmm. but I know Jesus once upon a time told us something like this. He said, "My yoke is easy, and my burden is light." Mm -hmm. And once upon a time, I used to think that that light was a reference to how heavy the burden is. When it's not about the heaviness of the burden, it's right. about what the burden is exactly. Right. Light as opposed to darkness, right. and 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 to hold all of that light on you can be a burden sometimes, especially for black people. Fact. You know what I'm saying? Fact. And so yeah, so so that's 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 the assignment. That's the assignment. 
Hey y'all, it's Mario. Why do I like the Silver Room so much? Because I can get what I need at the Silver Room. Fall through the Silver Room, 1506 East on 53rd Street in Hyde Park. Or you can visit them online at thesilverroom.com. I treat the show kind of like grad school. Word, yeah, yeah, You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, it's the only place where I can truly improve my craft and apply that kind of pressure and get paid for it at the same time. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Right, so, right. so I'm, I'm grateful. But what I found myself doing is picking up what my my castmates put down, right? Because I, 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 in my humble opinion, Chicago PD has probably one of the most talented casts on agree. television. And can we shout out Jessica Williams, even though she's not on there anymore, to make up the wonderful, oh, yeah. wonderful, wonderful yeah. makeup artist who we helped got make to. this happen, actually. Yeah, yeah. We got to shout out big sis Jessica All Williams. All respect to Jessica, man. man. I am a big fan. Mm-hmm. But go on, I'm sorry. Yeah, so, so, um, one of the things that, and shout out to Eric LaSalle, who uh, the acquisition of of his direction and leadership taught me so much. You know what I'm saying? He he pulled up on us around season five mm-hmm. um, and and was able to really lean into me and 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 make sure that Atwater was 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 shot in a powerful way. Make sure that I came to work and 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 really just raised a bar. You know what I'm saying, and created a standard. So, when you ask me if people were, if I heard about the look, yes, <laughs> but also in a way that like wasn't always. It didn't. It wasn't always flattering. Sometimes people are like, bro, why are your eyes so big? You know, you really like <laughs> your eyes really. And I'd be like, okay, I gotta learn how to calm those down. Oh, you know what man, I'm saying? Sometimes no. like it's, it's a way that you can tell a story, um, specifically, yeah. right? And 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 through. Eric LaSalle, Jason Begay, who plays Voight. Um, um, you know, like, I've, I've, I've learned some things, techniques. Michael T. Williamson, mm-hmm. you know, who played Bubba mm-hmm. and Forrest Gump, is a big mm-hmm. homie of mine who, yeah, who teaches dude. me dope technique. Super you good know what I'm saying? Dude. One of my yeah. favorite actors, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Um, and so, so yeah, so so those Atwater eyes, man, they... Atwater eyes, is that what they call it? That's what they call oh, it sometimes, it's man. Not a name. Those Atwater eyes, man. They, I'm, I'm doing my best with them. There's one episode. I guess some, they, they, they had broken to a church, or, this, or the, the pastor knew somebody that had did something. He was like trying to protect the informant, or something was happening. Yeah. And, and you were undercover as like a, a dope dealer, and a deal went bad or something. And then after all that was done, you just gave his cat this look, and I was like, that poor guy is in some trouble because he is about to stare right through his ass. He's yeah. over it. Yeah. I love that. I am a big appreciate fan. that. If we ever start a shot game, I'm sure we're gonna have to have an ambulance on deck because you do that look. <laughs> when people are like, oh shit, I am in trouble. Um, and you mentioned Eric Lasalle. I at my job, uh, he came through one night. Um, he's actually in, in uh, my, my sister is in Coming to America. Mm. So I hated Eric LaSalle for a long time. He made me angry every time I saw his face. Yeah. But, he is, but that's because he's a great actor. Man. And when somebody can make it, I, my philosophy about, if somebody can make you not like them, you don't know them, you don't know anything about them, but because you saw them play something that just did not sit well with you, yeah, that dude, is he's like the man. But his level of intensity is like 24-7. He's a really, or at least he seems that way, yeah. intense cat. And I noticed it, in mentioning Eric LaSalle, he directed seasons five through eight, right? Mm-hmm. There's, you can tell in your particular character the influence that he has on you. Talk about Eric LaSalle just in, in, in terms of how he has helped you become a better actor. Yeah, um, Eric LaSalle... Is a master storyteller. He's improved my storytelling technique. Mm. Not even just as an actor specifically, but as a because of what I've learned from him helps me as a poet, as a comedian, um, as 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 a musician, um, as a storyteller. You know, like well rounded, right? He he writes thri- thrillers, mm-hmm. like novels Mm -hmm. um directs at a very 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 high level um so his capacity to storytell is so good that it improves the storytellers around him Mm. he will come to work and he had this rule 
that the best idea wins. Hmm. Whether it came from a PA or the prop master, hmm. Jessica Williams could have had a better idea mm -hmm. in the huddle up. Mm -hmm. And if it was better, that's the direction we would have went. Mm. As a storyteller, when you allow that kind of freedom on the set, it just raises the bar and it makes everybody feel free to be the storyteller they are, right. how they storytell. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so that that's what I learned from him. I learned how to how to partner my energy with with other energy, how to reflect my light off of somebody else's mm -hmm. um, in order to serve the story. One of my favorite Eric DeSalle stories um, is, is, is a moment that we shared in a scene he directed where we all just found out Olinsky died. Mm -hmm. Um, and Alinsky being the pivotal character that he was, it made sense to me to cry. Mm -hmm. I also been coming off an audition that week where I've been practicing on my tears. Right. Like that week, I could give you, what, I, I could cry my ass off that week. I go, oh, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes right. you just in that pocket. Right. And so I'm like, and since I'm still in the pocket, this sounds like a perfect opportunity for me to just, you know what I'm saying? Let it Drop out. a couple of them things yeah, down. Yeah, you hear me? Yeah, yeah. And so it was this moment where he's directing this scene and he's like, okay, um, I'm, I'm only going to shoot this from, a, from I'm, I'm going to do a, a fat wide on this shot. Okay. I'm going to shoot it through the mirror into everybody on, or onto everybody. And however you grieve, you grieve. I'm not going to direct that. Let that come naturally. But whatever you all do, if we get it done once, we can, we, I'm going to lock it in. We can move on. And then from there, we'll carry on the scene based off of wherever you all went and we'll pick it up from there. Mm -hmm. And so I remember him saying action. I remember feeling compelled to just walk out of the room. Mm. I think Jesse, who plays Halsted, also walked out of the room. I think Patty might have kicked the vending machine. I think Burgess might have, like, fell to her knees. Like, everybody did something different. But he said cut. He liked it. Hmm. We check the gate on it and start moving on to the next. So naturally on that next scene, the scene that follows immediately, I had to walk back into the room. Mm -hmm. And that's when I was going to give him the tears. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was I'm about to walk back in crying. They ain't never seen that water cry for real. Like they don't even know I got the I got them kind of chops. You right, feel me? Right. So I'm right. excited to get the <laughs> chops off. And so I come back in. I got a couple of tears on me. Cut. <laughs> LaRoyce, come here. Eric LaSalle mad at me for some reason. I'm like, what? I just, I just snapped. What is he? I just won an Emmy for these like, I just went crazy. I'm what crying. is he doing? He said, he, he, he looked at me. He was like, what are you doing? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah? He said, where did you go and what are you doing? Hmm. Wow. I didn't know how to answer those questions for real. Right. Since I didn't know how to answer the questions, he was even more offended. Oh, wow. He was like, don't you ever tell me you don't know why you did something. See, I think getting cursed out by Eric LaSalle might be one of the worst Man, shits ever. It doesn't happen to be a handful of times. That's <laughs> why I'm, I'm, I'm a different dude. <laughs> I'm a different dude. Sometimes he be talking to me, but I be like, this this nigga, my real daddy, the way I feel about this. Like, what, what's like, going on? Am I so, yes, like, why sir? am I so affected? Um, he he was he was like, don't you ever tell me you don't know why you did something? Oh wow! He said you have to know. Mm, it's your yeah. responsibility to yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to be specific with your intentions. Hmm. So he asked me, so why did you walk out of the room? I I walked out of the room because I I I, I felt like I should, but you said it was good, so. Right. He was like, you walked out the room because you didn't want anybody to see you cry. Cry. Ah, and then you come back in and you cry. So why would you walk back in the room crying? Uh, Eric LaSalle laid the smack down on I you. I said, damn, you're right. <laughs> wow. You're right. And so that's why it's so important to be specific about your intentions. Mm. Because as actors, we don't have the luxury of just being able to go with our gut and just say, you know what? 
my gut told me to do it, so I did it. In life, you can get away with that without knowing exactly why your gut did that. Right. But as an actor, you have to be specific about why because you have multiple takes. You have to do it over and over and over again. So the more specific you are about exactly why you're doing something, the more believable you are. The more you got something to actually hold on to, and that's storytelling. Wow. That specificity of storytelling. Wow. And so I was like, okay, I get it. And that's something that I'll never forget, but that's a lesson that I think translates into everything. You know what I'm saying? The more specific we are with our intentions, you know what I'm saying? I, I think the more ground we can cover. Hey, listen, fellas, ladies, babies, everybody, check out your health. Go to Howard Brown Health and find out where you stand. Nobody needs to guess what's going on in their body. You can actually find out at Howard Brown Health. And they can consult you about certain things. It doesn't matter what situation you're in. If you want to check out how you're doing a diagnostic on yourself, visit Howard Brown Health right away. HowardBrownHealth.com. Or if you're in Chicago, there is a Howard Brown Health somewhere near you. Trust and believe. As sure as the fire department is rolling down the street right now, there's a Howard Brown Health. Are you about to do the Kevin Atwater break off show? Yeah, you get your, I, yeah, <laughs> get your own know. show. I don't know if they're ready for that one. Well, you can bring Bobblehead in. And right. <laughs> come on, Bobblehead. Let's do this. Um, Bobblehead. Bobby. Shout out to Bobblehead. You're a good brother. I have never <laughs> met you, or maybe I have, but you're a good brother. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Um, <laughs> love, Cam. You did. Uh, <laughs> but now, it's, it's. I think I think we were really set up for the perfect storm. Mm based off of how we, we ended season seven mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, true. with that accidental finale. True, true. Um, because that wasn't supposed to be the finale. Right, but COVID happened. But COVID happened. Yeah. So we had to, we had to roll with that episode um, to take us out. And the way that the world ended up, it was, it was the perfect alley-oop. Mm -hmm. um, dark, but perfect yeah you know and walking into season eight i knew that i would probably if if we were going to respond and and how we told stories in season eight i knew that i was gonna have to uh i was probably gonna have to be on the front line of that mm. i remember having a conversation with eric lasalle about that right before the season started mm -hmm. and i was telling him about all of these um these these i guess thoughts that I was having to like, I'm like, man, we got to uplift the image of the black man. And how do we reimagine police? And Eric said, I like, that's what I want to do. Like, I'm, 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 I'm ready to do that. Uh, because I know what direction we got to go and I know how we just ended it. So, you know, and I'm talking all this tough stuff and he gave me another moment. <laughs> he was like, well, I hear you talking, right? but you know, I'm a straight shooter. Right. And you can't be an agent of change if you're not a man of consistency. Mm, wow. Damn. Eric LaSalle? <laughs> this dude is I, dropping balls I told you, boy. I was day. like, hey, Eric LaSalle. <laughs> like, he, <laughs> biological. He was like, you might be the biological. I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'll be so <laughs> affected. Um, but no, he said, you, you have to be. A man of consistency in order to be an agent of change. Wow. And what he was saying was there was some things in my game that I truly had to tighten up mm. if I was going to lead the revolution. <laughs> in your, in, 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 as Kevin Atwater's game. Yeah. Your character's game. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Things, wow. things that the average person probably wouldn't be able to see. Naturally, I'm grateful that everybody's being able to see my growth, but um, just, just little random stuff like just being late for work sometimes. Yeah. And he's like, it's not about being late as much as it is about being a leader. Uh, you know, uh, he said that there are some there are some ways that you have to prepare your game. And every Atwater episode where we run in plays around you, obviously, he said you show up. But that's honestly a part time greatness. Oh, wow. What about the episodes that don't revolve around you? How do you set picks? How do you get rebounds? You, you, and, 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 and I don't mean to cut you off. In a, in a previous interview, you talked about how you all used basketball analogies a mm -hmm. lot mm -hmm. when you talk about how he wanted your character to go. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Kobe in Kobe. an interview, and you were like, yeah. well, if I do this scene correctly, that's my 81 point game. Yeah, yeah. So that and, was a thing that you all did. Yeah, and, and huh. so that was, 
And but but imagine that that way I was counting my lines gotcha. as as like points. Gotcha. So imagine the field goal percentage based off every take. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was like yeah. okay, if I got 81 lines, that's that's that, that's essentially 81 points that I can put up. Mm -hmm. So I would count all my lines, and I would know. Okay, this this kind of feels like a free throw. That's gonna feel like a long three. That line is gonna be something like you know what I'm saying, pulling right. up at the shoulder. Right, right. But imagine the well-roundedness of your game when you're not just counting your points, but your opportunities to rebound. You know what I'm saying? How do you hand off a line? Like how are you serving the scene outside of when you're talking? It's kind of like moving without the ball. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so. Eric LaSalle essentially helped me raise my acting IQ the same way a LeBron James has to have a high basketball IQ and just know how to be a general on the floor. Yeah. Like, that's what Voight comes to work with every day. Powerful general on the floor. That's so, bad man. Man, when that's I tell you, man. bro, he cold. He cold. That's a bad and, man. And, and the way that he is so unselfish. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He'll offer you a line or take one of your lines if it just feels better. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so that's the kind of way that I, that I want to elevate my game. And so I said all that to say, that's how I had to walk into season eight. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Otherwise, this season would not have, you know, and all of us, all of us had to elevate our games like that. Like, mm -hmm. not just me, but Eric DeSalle had that conversation with all of us because he only directed half of the season. Right. Um, and before he got out, he wanted all of us to understand the game that way so that we'll be director proof, so that minus him, we'll still be storytelling at the same high level. Yeah. Um, with the way to George Floyd walking into season eight, uh, you know, I, I knew that that was going to be something that vibrated from top to bottom. By the end of the season, we had the weight of the justice that would be served for George Floyd. Um, on, on, on top of a uh, a Dante Wright. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, and 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 the other ancestors now that 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 were taken tragi tragically because of the lack of empathy. Yeah. You yeah. know, because yeah. the lack of empathy, hmm. and so we had episodes that that I know dealt with that um, very very specifically. We had episodes that that sometimes um, dealt with reform, right? So it was really like not just police brutality, but reform and how we redefine. Um, and reimagine um, what policing is, especially from the city of Chicago. Yeah. And that's something that I think season eight only, it like that, that that's a staple now, in my humble opinion. We can't forget that. That has to be something that continues to vibrate. That Those have to be lessons that we continue to learn because we have to unlearn. You know what I'm saying? I think Chicago PD does a great job at unpacking issues um, and I think the next step to growth is unlearning mm. the issues. That's why I have the uncomfortable conversations with the showrunners about my responsibility, right. not just to black people, but to the white part of the audience as well, because right. they have to unlearn how they feel about the black man. You know what I'm saying? Police officers have to unlearn what they, how they've been taught to police in certain communities. Right. You know, and until we unlearn these things, um, you know, we, we're not going to grow. We're going to continue to find ourselves in the same situations. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully season nine, if if season eight we unpacked it, hopefully in season nine we unlearn it. Wow. Um, I got about maybe five minutes left. Uh, I know that you have an amazing reach with people. I've seen you put shows together where you got props, you got a band, it's everything. Like everything is happening in these shows Appreciate that you that, do. Bro. And I am a big fan of those. Uh, I, unfortunately, most of the time I had to work, so I wasn't able to see it, but I could hear everything. Yeah. And I think sometimes that's the, you know, I'm a radio dude, so hearing things is, is mm -hmm. big for me. Mm -hmm. um, but I see, how, I see how people gravitate toward you and how you delegate responsibility to folks in your in the the big variety show that you do mm -hmm. um I, I i i'm saying this to you as a, not just as a as a fan but as somebody that knows you a little bit i think that that is one of the dopest things i've ever seen i've only seen a handful of cats that do that kind of thing wow. that aren't like 
I'm the leader and this is what we're going to do. It's a very subtle, very, very thought out way that I've seen you and I'm not even going to mention these other folks. Eventually I will. But I've seen like maybe four or five people, men and women alike, that are able to to lead without forcing it and making people feel like, oh, shit, if, if I don't listen to what he said, he yeah. might do, so, you know, Thank it, you. I, I just, I want, I'm, I wanted you on this show because I want people to know that besides that character you play on, on a very successful television show, the depth of you people have not seen yet. You see this brother Leroy's, and when he's doing poetry or he's singing or doing a, a just talking to somebody, it is so cool to That's see love. this happen. So when you get your 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 Academy Award in a couple years for a movie that I don't know if it's been made yet, <laughs> um, it won't be a surprise to me at all when it comes to you. I think I think we're lucky that uh, we get a chance to see you work. And and uh, people are they ain't not ready yet. Man, they get a chance you. to see you smoke and do your thing. Appreciate so, that. I thank you for being on, man. And man, you brought thank your you niece. For me. Your niece is here from Clark University, Clark yeah, in man. Atlanta. Yeah, man. You dig? You hear me? The HBCU you is know what I'm bro. We planting seeds, That's bro. What I'm talking you know what I'm saying? She next up. I'm ready for that. Your brother is here. He didn't steal on me. I must have did okay. Man, we did the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. You got it. I got, and, and I love. Uh, I. I I'm definitely grateful for what you said. Thank you for saying right that. On, it right means on. a lot to hear that. Right on. Um, you know, and, and it's important for me to keep people like Big Bro around me, for to sure. keep family close. For sure. um, because Which you do. Because right now, the, for me, the priority is protecting and preserving legacy. You know what I'm saying? I've been a father for for four years now. Nice. And um, and, and as I try to, and as I raise my son, the young ruler, um, I want him to be able to see the same thing, right? How to, how to lead. Uh, with love and with light first and not with force, you know. Um, I, I notice him already being extremely gifted. Nice. And so uh, with, you know, I'm, I'm a person who was blessed with a bunch of different gifts in the bag as well. And so I try to do my best to allow them to inform each other yeah. so that they don't have to compete with each other, you know what I'm saying, yeah. so that he can, if he sees it the same way, he'll be able to maximize his bag as well. Um and, and that's what I'm about. And that's what I'm about. So I appreciate you saying that, man. Right it definitely on. means a lot. I'm glad that you were here, man. Tell the others, you know, come sure. on down. For we, sure. We, I definitely will. We got room. It's not always as warm, but there's a woman outside singing and she be serenading the crap out of Hyde Park. We got to kind of. I heard it. Yeah. She was a player, boy. <laughs> she be blowing. Thanks, She's brother. still going, ain't she? Yes, she is. Absolutely. Yeah, she plays. There's no doubt. Oh, usually, on this, usually on this show, there's a truck, a horn, fire engine, that woman singing or a fight. One of those things always happens in the tonight. Some kind of domestic. Yeah, man. <laughs> Thanks for being our randomly selected, brother. Man, thank Truly you for randomly selecting me. Yes, sir. From the heart. Thanks for listening to the program today. Really appreciate it. And thank you to Leroy Hawkins for being on the show. Learned a lot about the brother today. It's not all just about him playing a cop on Chicago PD. We even got a chance to learn about Bobblehead. And Bobblehead, if you're listening, peace and respect on your name, brother my man thanks for listening to the program everybody tell your friends subscribe to randomly selected and don't forget to check out my brother my brother Dwayne powell on sound rotation because that show is dope see you guys soon peace